So within this soil profile that we've got here, uh, obviously it's a much larger profile than a lot of the other ones that we've looked at, but that's partly because we need to have a much bigger pit in order to be able to uh, see the important features of this particular uh, profile. So one of the things that'll strike you when you first look at this is, well, not much actually, because unlike a lot of the pits that we've looked at, there's not a lot of significant color gradations to really strike your eye and sort of guide you to, to where the horizon breaks are. Instead, we're looking at uh, a bit more subtle variations, primarily in terms of structure and some of the other, uh, some of the other features that we talked about uh, when we were talking about how these soils form and what characterizes them. So the first thing we can note is that we are in an agricultural landscape and so generally that means that we would characterize the, the surface horizon, so that upper 10 centimeters of the soil profile, as an AP horizon. And so basically just this first layer here, it's been uh, affected slightly by, uh, by agricultural management. But again, the, the, the form of, of, of tillage that's here is fairly minor, such that you can't even see the, the type of evidence of, of cultivation that you would see in, in, some, other, in some other fields. So we'll say there's an AP horizon from about 0 to 10 centimeters, but then uh, we would also note that in this particular environment, we also have carbonates right to, right to the surface, again, because of the self-turning nature of the soil, and so it would probably be classed as an APK horizon. Now below that, from 10 centimeters to about 50 centimeters, we have what we're, we would call a BV horizon, so uppercase B, lowercase V. And so this denotes that we've got um, the, the vertic characteristics. And so this is the, the horizon that's sort of most uh, visibly affected by, uh, by the churning in the sense that the, it, it, the evidence is primarily in the form of the, the, uh, the structure. It's quite mixed up. Now we've just had quite a bit of precipitation here over the last little while, so the structural units aren't hanging together necessarily all that well. Uh, if I take some, um, uh, some units off, some pieces off of the side here, we can see that we've got some, some nice uh, subangular blocky pieces here, which, uh, which break apart fairly well. And if we actually break, them, break into the, the centers of them, there, there is a, a little bit of coatings on the outside that's a little bit darker than the interior of them. But again, uh, based on the fact that we've got similar colored material near the surface, it's not as pronounced as we might see in a, in a different profile. So the BV goes from 10 to about 50 centimeters, and about 50 we start to get into a much more uh, uh, dense horizon, which is the one that we would characterize as our, our BSS horizon, where the SS stands for slicken sides. And it's not slicken slides, which sounds like something you would set up in the backyard in the summertime. Uh, and it's a common thing that students put on final exams, but slicken sides. So reflecting the, that we've got these massive uh, uh, units within the soil, and as the soil expands, basically the pressure of those units sliding against each other makes these sheer faces. And so if we look here, we've sort of carefully cleared away some areas here, and so there are these smooth, shiny faces where the clay, the masses of clay have slid past each other, uh, creating uh, uh, the slick sides. And they're typically at angles about uh, 20 to 60 percent, um, uh, uh, sorry, 20 to 60 degrees angles, and they can often intersect as well. So underneath the, uh, underneath our our BSS horizon, we have we get into our, our C horizon, so that starts around 85 centimeters, and so extending from 85 centimeters basically to over two meters depth, we have our, our C horizon. And so in this case, our C horizon, uh, we can add a, a number of different suffixes to it because there's, there's quite a lot going on. We've got uh, one of the things that you can see when you look at the horizon, one of the most striking visual features of it are the, the white speckles of, of, of gypsum that we see. So reflecting that the gypsum that's present within the soil parent material has moved that far down within the soil profile and been deposited here. We also see evidence of a few small slick insides uh, down here. But again, if, uh, if we were to get, the, get out the tape measure and measure them, we would see that these ones do actually still meet the criteria for the slick inside horizon. So they, they would be, we could add a, a, an SS designation. So an SA to reflect the presence of the gypsum deposit, an SS to reflect the slick insides. But one of the other 
uh, features that we've got. I mentioned earlier that in this profile we can see evidence of cracks that extend all the way down to, to two meters depth. And if we look at this sample that we pulled up from further down within the soil profile, we can actually see a really good example here of where the cracks have formed and then the lighter colored material that's nearer to the surface has sloughed in and fallen down those uh, cracks. And so we see these veins of lighter colored material that's come in from the surface. And so that's that type of evidence of, of cracking and uh, um, mulching of the soil would give it the, the V designation as well. So we've got a CVSSSA horizon and then if we also look at this profile, if we look at it in terms of the effervescence, there's actually um, uh, carbonates present throughout the profile, not just near the surface. And so we can actually, we could feasibly add uh, a K designation to, to much of this soil profile as well. So a uh, CKVSSSA horizon extending from uh, about 85 centimeters down to the bottom of the pit.